Hey guys, Shurum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Bentley Continental GT3 in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 at Golden Max in its multiplayer season. Now, this car was one that, when it first came out, I don't think a lot of people really tried too hard to get because it was a Grand Prix that I actually did manage to win, but I only got it at one star. And the reason that people were not going for it a lot, at least from what I can remember, was because this car had the worst drifting in the game at the time. I made a video about it last September when it first came out at Golden Max in a multiplayer season, and so this is actually one of the first times that Gameloft has run a Golden Max free try season for the same car twice, at least from what I can remember. But it was for a good reason, it's to show off the good new drifting which you will see around this turn here. Before, you just kind of slide into a wall over there. Now it's actually very sharp, and I actually had to not drift as much as I could have, so I didn't miss the yellow nitro by going too far on the inside. That is so weird for this car, because I just remember when it first came out, it was not like this at all. I'm very glad that they updated that. They also did that with cars like the Devo and the Bailey Blade, which now have much better driftings than they used to. The Devos is still not amazing, but it's at least better than before. Now, I did manage to two stars this car in its car hunt, so that is why I've been able to make it purple, and this also allowed me to get an extra blueprint for the Volkswagen W12 in that car's special event. And although I don't think I'm going to be able to win that car, I have been able to progress at least somewhat through the event, and some people wondered in my stream how I was able to gain access to the third day and so on without having the Roma because the amount of conditions you get from the first day is not enough to unlock the third day without playing at least four races in the second day. Or at least that's what I thought. I was told by some people that you can actually skip five of the conditions in the second day just with 50 tokens. And so what I did was I spent, I think, 200 tokens on four of those so that I'd be able to bypass the Roma day and continue on through the event, in which I've been able to go through, I think, three more days at this point so far. I know I'm not going to be able to get the W12, but I always try to go as far through every special event as I can without spending much or any tokens, usually none. This time I had to spend a little, but I'm hoping I get it back throughout it, but just in general that's a good idea, because it's one of actually the easiest ways to get a good number of tokens, some of these special events, and the Grand Prix. And this is something I said even back in the Asphalt 8 days, if you know you're not going to be able to get a car, at least go through the event as much as you can, if you have time of course do that, because you'll just end up with a bunch of free rewards that might not be a lot, but they're more than you would have otherwise. So this race, and the last one were two really close ones that I faced earlier in the season in the Elite League, and the next five races are five sequential races, some in Elite League, some in Masters League, but they're basically to show the last five races of the season that I played pretty much, and how I was able to get to top 20 in the multiplayer season when it finished. Yes, I finished exactly at number 20, and I finished all of the milestones, and I'm going to try to do that a bit more often in multiplayer. Recently, I haven't been going for the top 100s as much, but I'll probably try to keep doing it as much as I can for the seasons which have these max free try cars because, in my opinion, they are some of the most skill-based ones, and especially the Volkswagen W12 one that's going on right now, which is a ghost season and slipstream, so my favorite kind of season, as many of you guys know, like, that would be a prime candidate for me. And I plan to make a video about the W12 soon, too. Now, some bit of news has come out over the weekend. Some of you may have heard this, some of you may have not, but Forza Horizon 5 has officially been confirmed. It will be out this November with the Standard and Deluxe Editions coming out on November 8th, and the Premium Edition, or the most expensive one that gives you everything, including two expansions, will be coming out on November 4th. So four days early. I do plan to purchase that version, and the game also has ray tracing capabilities. Now my PC it now has a graphics card that can do ray tracing. It's an RTX 3070, so I should be able to make some really high quality content with that game. I've loved Forza Horizon 4, I've liked the bits of Forza Horizon 3 that I have played, and so I'm really looking forward to this one. I will wait for a while on pre-ordering it, just because I don't really like pre-ordering video games. Now, this is one that I'd be fairly confident in pre-ordering without much of a problem, but I just want to wait to see 
there's anything really major that comes up ahead of time, like if it gets delayed or something, and just generally, I'd love to see more of game content before I put my money into something like that. But it will be coming, I am super excited about it, and I will still continue to be making Forza Horizon 4 videos every other week, generally speaking, up until then, and when that game comes out, I probably will switch to doing mostly Forza Horizon 5 content over Forza Horizon 4. I don't mean more than asphalt content, I mean in the Forza content realm that I do, mostly 5, but maybe still a little bit of 4. Asphalt 9 will still be the primary game on my channel, and I do not expect that to change at all unless it becomes quite unplayable for free-to-play players. I don't think Gameloft would make that happen because then like 90% of their player base would be completely unhappy, which they kind of already are, but you guys know what I mean. If it got to the point where you couldn't get any new cards without spending money, that's the time when I would think about quitting the game. But until then, it's going to be my game. I still really enjoy it, even though it does have a lot of problems and things. It's still a very fun game to me at its core, and so I plan to keep uploading it just as often as I always have been. Now, in the previous race, we got to 1794 rating. In the season, Master League, the highest league, the equivalent of Legend League in a normal season, was at 1800. I don't know why in some seasons it's at 1800, and then in other seasons, seasons, it's 1750. It just seems really weird, like, why wouldn't they have it be consistent across all seasons? Because sometimes I get to 1750, and I'm in Legend League, and other times I get there and I'm not yet, so it's kind of weird. I just like consistency, but I knew that in this season, because I checked ahead of time, it was at 1800, and, well, I hadn't gotten there at 1750 yet, so it would kind of have to be, unless I got higher, which, thankfully, they've never done yet. But in any way, in this race, I knew that if I won it, I would be able to get there, because I only needed to go up six rating. Now, so far in the season, I had some pretty close races. Some of them I did get pretty far ahead. I had a few races where I got kind of far behind because of a knockdown or something. But overall, had some pretty fun ones in the season. And I was thinking this one was going to be a pretty good one too. I was getting slightly further and further ahead. And so I wasn't quite as worried about <laughs> losing rating the race before getting to the next league, like what has seemed to happen a lot of the time. Like I'll be, I'll be having streaks leading up to reaching a new league. And then all of a sudden, when I'm just a few rating away, the next race just goes horribly. Either I make a silly mistake or I run up against somebody who's crazily skilled and I can't beat them like that. And then it just all goes downhill. One of the biggest like roller coaster multiplayer happenings like that that I can remember are way back in my Lancer two star video. Back when I was in a two star Lancer competing in the Lancer multiplayer season against a bunch of three star ones. And I was trying to reach 1500. I guess that was Platinum League at that time or whatever the equivalent was. And it was really bad. I'd get up to 1490 and then go down to 1440. Then after a few races, get back up again and then have a streak of bad races and go down. In that video, I showed a lot of that roller coaster ride. I didn't show all of it, but it took so many races to finally get there after getting close probably half a dozen times. That doesn't usually happen to that extent in the normal seasons, but in some cases it can to a smaller extent. I am sure that some of you may be wondering now, after this car got its drifting buffed, is it worth to go for? I still don't really think so, and let me explain why. Even though it drives quite well now, I gotta say, I mean, way, way better than it used to be. This car has had one of the best quality of driving improvements that I've ever seen in Asphalt 9, but it's still slow. It only goes 194. That's about the speed of the Shelby GT350 or the Dodge Challenger Hemi, which, as you guys know, aren't kings of the class anymore, and this car doesn't really offer much above them. I mean, the nitro efficiency even isn't even as good. So, yeah, I don't really think this one is really worth to spend any tokens on in order to star up or anything. If you're able to four-star it in its car hunt, that's awesome. But other than that, I don't really think it's worth much to go for. And now it is time for my general review about the car, which I guess I kind of already talked about a bit. The handling and the drifting are quite good now, as is the acceleration. The nitro and the top speed, however, are not that great and it's just not going to be as good overall as any of the current D-Class Kings, like the TVR Griffith or the Mazda Fury, which are quite a bit faster, 
and, you know, even though they don't have as good of nitro efficiency or handling necessarily, the speed definitely gives them a pretty sizable advantage. Now, we did manage to get to Master League back in that Osaka video, and these last couple of races are just the two after that, just trying to see how high I could get in the season, but I think after I went from 20th to 19th position from the last race to this one, I decided it was probably time to leave it there. It was the last day of the season when I recorded these, and I didn't want to risk losing a bunch and then dropping out of top 100. So I just stayed put, and it turned out pretty well. As I take the final victory in this race, I actually end up in 19th position in the season, and I completely finished the milestones going up to 3,000. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed, and consider subscribing for more Asphalt and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!